Shalom, he bros and she brews. Welcome to the channel. I am Old Bill Disciple, and we are going to cruise with Jesus on another video. I'm going to clarify another issue that I seen in my video yesterday. It's not wrong, it's just I didn't explain it uh, the best way I could have. So uh, I got a little bit before I get to my next lease. So hang in there with me, watch it to the end. And uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel, please go and subscribe. Hit the like button and the little bell icon when you subscribe. And comment anything you have that you would um, encourage me on or issue with me on or whatever. And uh, Tribulation X, thank you, brother, for always hanging in there. And, and Mr. John, my brother John Aishi, uh, always always know that uh, I'm thinking about you guys and I keep you in my prayers and anyone else that uh, watches these videos regularly I know I don't comment on the videos I watch so I understand let's let's cruise with Jesus here and uh, we still got an icy winter wonderland but the roads seem to be pretty clear outside of being in town they were slick as snot this morning but anyway all right let me do uh, Let's let's talk about the baptism, because I know I didn't I didn't speak as clearly on baptism yesterday as I could have. I had a lot I was trying to get out, and so let's clarify it. <coughs> in in um, in Matthew twenty three, there's eight woes that Jesus gives the Pharisees, and one of those are, um, "Woe you blind guides and Pharisees, you." strain at a gnat and you swallow a camel what does that mean all right at the heart of today's religious system the the institute that is is, is in place that is popular uh, christian being christianity christendom being number one and islam a uh, close second both of those institutions have correct and false doctrines and that's why I don't identify with none of those and I explained that yesterday in a video <coughs> I, I identify as a disciple of Yeshua my Messiah my Lord my Savior the one that freely give me the grace to have salvation for the redemption of what he did on the cross in that he made certain decrees and demands that we are to follow in Matthew 28, 19, and 20, he says, Go into all the world and make disciples, teaching and preaching what I have commanded you, baptizing all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right? Now that is in order. You feel me? He laid that out in order. You go and make disciples. You go, you, you first have to learn yourself. And then you go and you preach what you've learned. Whether you're a, a pastor or whether you're just a simple lay person that sits in the very back of the pews on, on two days a year, Christmas and Easter, the wicked holidays. <clears throat> I've got videos on those as well. Um, so, so baptism. When I first started going to church I was about 24 years old somewhere around in there never been to church a day in my life my dad went and he started liking it he missed the, the playoffs one day because he was at church and I thought what in the world happened to my pops anyway the spirit got a hold of me and how it got a hold of me was because the pastor did a sermon on Matthew 7, 20 through 23. Those, in those days, in this day, the there will be many who, who save and cast out demons in my name, and I will tell them, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. And it shook me to the core because I didn't know who Jesus Messiah was at that point. I asked my wife, who was sitting with me at the time, who is this guy? 
I take it I had a grandma who who professed Baptist <clears throat> and I had an uncle who was a preacher and I never once heard the name Jesus Christ is my Savior till I was 24 years old that I know of and so that shook me to the core I began researching who this Jesus is if he has that much authority I want to know who he is and I began on my own researching it and a pastor at the time who now I, I, I would say is a, is a wicked deceiver a wolf in sheep's clothing whether on purpose or accident just following tradition this happened to be a Methodist church well after learning who Messiah was I realized I needed to get baptized and he kept pushing it you got to get baptized you got to get baptized I went to work one night to the rig and, and he'd come to the house and goes we got to get you baptized if you die out there before we do this your soul's in everlasting hell I'm like we're gonna get her done let's, let's do it this week when I you know when we do service and with the Methodists they they take water on their hands and they sprinkle it on your head and you do your little ceremony and and whatnot and good to go now you can be saved oh he made a big deal out of it you know now now brother matt here he's he's not going to go to hell i was i was happy i didn't know any better you know i was like cool you know at that point i'm thinking you have to get baptized you go to hell the more i'm reading the more i'm learning over the years i'm thinking Jesus never commanded a certain way or direction to baptize. When I read in Acts chapter 8 with Philip and the eunuch, I'm thinking they're out there in the desert. And dude found a water hole somewhere and, and baptized him. And I'm sure it wasn't much of a, of a, of a water hole. Probably more of a mud hole. And more I'm reading I'm like where did Jesus command the specifics on baptism now baptism um, comes from the Latin baptismo um, which reverts back to um, immersion but it doesn't say full immersion it doesn't say half immersion it doesn't say forward immersion or backwards immersion and as I look at all these doctrines and dogmas of men they have all these specifics of baptism. Baptism does not save you. Baptism does nothing for you other than a profession of faith. And here's how I'm going to explain baptism. And then I'm going to go into some of these doctrines and dogmas of men. <clears throat> As I see and read and understand baptism in Scripture... Making disciples is what began with me. I was being made a disciple, learning as a student of Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. My heart broke. And I began seeking my Lord to the point where, hey, that's something he's asked me to do, to get done. It was a personal deal. And so I did it. Baptism is like a marriage. Okay? That little piece of paper that we get in this culture that says, you are now man and wife under the state of New Mexico or Texas or Oklahoma, whatever, is worthless. It's no different than baptism. Now, don't hear me wrong. I'm not saying baptism's worthless. It's 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 necessary, but it's not um, required. All right? If you die before you get baptized and you have your heart with the Messiah, you're not going to go to hell just because you didn't get baptized. So I look at it like a marriage. I don't just walk up to a woman one day and say, "Come with me. We're going to this down to the courthouse or down to the." the Methodist house or the Baptist house or wherever, you're going to marry me. That ain't going to work. Try it. Huh, but it don't work for you. All right? You are like the woman in that situation. 
we are like the woman in that situation. We can't come to someone and say, get baptized or go to hell. It's not going to work. Like I said yesterday, it may be that the person you're dealing with is scared to death of water. Scared to death of being dumped. I had a guy like that I baptized once. He was scared. But he was excited to do it because he loved his Jesus that I, I'd been making a disciple of him of. Okay? And so we got her done. And I explained to him exactly what baptism was. Like I'm explaining it now. So, baptism is like a marriage. You meet this female, and the female meets the male, and they begin conversing with one another, and they realize over a period of time that, hey, I want to spend the rest of my life with this person. I can't see my life without them. You perform the ceremony. Right? Now, I'll do a video on what biblical marriage is one of these days anyway what we understand in this western culture the ceremony standing before the the justice of peace or the pastor or the deacon or whoever is performing the ceremony and you give your vows and say i do that's what baptism is y'all all right have you ever been to two weddings that are alike i mean really one, one couple may be at the church building. Another couple may be out there by the sea. Does that make them any more or less married? Maybe this couple gives their own vows. This other couple wants the vows that are traditional that the pastor gives or the justice of peace gives. Does that make them any more or less married? No, it does not. <coughs> like I said, I'll do a biblical marriage video one of these days. So I'm just, I'm going with the rhetoric of the, the Western culture that we understand right now. So you understand what I'm saying. There is no exact set way as long as you do the, 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 the ceremony, correct? All right, now we're tracking. Baptism's the same way. I don't care if you get dunked in a hot tub if you get dumped in a swimming pool in a lake a river i don't care if the the pastor throws water in your face three times four times one time you, he dips you forward or dips you back i don't care neither does jesus that's what he means when you are straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel meaning this is so minute of an issue that you're choking on this where you you swallow the camel knowing that Jesus is our Lord and Savior but all these other minor issues you're, you're choking on you're choking on how to get baptized and it doesn't mean anything because Jesus did not ever give any certain command on the specifics of baptism right I mean go read it if you can find it in there where Jesus said this is the exact way to do it, show it to me, please, by all means. <coughs> That's doctrines and dogmas of men. Right? Do you, do, does, that, does that clarify baptism for you a little bit? It's a, it's a performed ceremony, a outward don't like using this this phraseology but i'm going to for a minute it's an outward expression of an inward understanding okay you're expressing that i cannot imagine my life without jesus anymore and this is my ceremony that is is showing that and proving that and i'm professing that that i want my messiah i love my messiah Remember I said Matthew 7, 23, where Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. That word, when he, that, that phrase, when he says, I never knew you, is the same phrase that Jacob, you, that, that it's written about of Jacob when he takes Leah and Rachel into the tent and knows them. It means to have intimate physical contact with one another, intercourse. 
That's the same phrase that Jesus used that he never knew you. He never had an intimate um, physical relationship with you. Now, granted, we are not going to have that intimate physical um, um, intercourse with Jesus. But it's, it's a love like, man, I love my pops. I love my brother, my uncle. Just love them to the point where you want to be around them all the time. That's that's what it's doing when you get baptized. Nothing more, nothing less. And as you grow in Messiah, like I said yesterday in my video, if you can't look back at your life and see growth, knowledge, and understanding, and wisdom, and the Messiah, with the Messiah, then you have work to do. We must be moving forward with Jesus or we're, or we're dead. We're dead in the water. Does that make sense? All right, let's talk about these dogmas of men here real quick. Why I don't identify at any specific denomination um, and simply a disciple is because, first of all, that's what Jesus called those who followed him, his disciples. I want to be who Jesus says I am. I'm his disciple. Disciple simply means taught one. Okay? Simple. A learned one. You are in school learning about Messiah. It's the same thing in a marriage. Once I say my vows, I do, to my wife, that's not the end. That's the beginning. Right? I don't do the ceremony and then never see my wife again. Marriage ain't going to last long. You're going to be getting divorce papers. Go a month without talking to your wife or your husband. See how long that lasts. It won't work. It's the same thing with Jesus. And the only way we can get intimate with him is through the word that he's given us. And I trust that word because in Isaiah, let's see. Yeah, Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 12, God tells us that his word will not come back to him void. Meaning his, his son that he sends is the word, and that word will not come back void. Well, if it don't come back void, and I know that he spoke all of this into, into his existence with his spoken word, I'm pretty sure he can sustain the written word regardless of its translation of what language. He can sustain that just as well. <clears throat> if not, that would be a wicked God to give you false information. Now, how we interpret it becomes the problem. You know? Um, we'll get on another video. Anyway, back to baptism, or back to the doctrines and dogmas of men. Each denomination become dom denominations over frivolous, ridiculous issues. All right? I've been doing some studies on the history of, of, of religion um, since the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord Messiah. And it's interesting. These 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 denominations become denominations and right now in American Christianity, you know there's 42,000 different denominations instituted denominations. 42,000 different denominations of Christianity. That means there's 42,000 different ways somebody's telling you to get to Yeshua. When Yeshua says there's only one way. It's ridiculous and it pisses me off because it's like you people, you wicked blind guides and Pharisees. If you read that book for yourself, you're going to look at your pastor and go, what in the hell is he talking about? It doesn't say that. I promise you, just like the baptism that I received, the first... I, I actually have been immersed because I felt I needed to be immersed um, later on. That's what the Spirit led on my heart. If you got sprinkled and the Spirit ain't convicted you of nothing, cool. I don't care. You know, throw a jug of water in your face. Whatever. All right? Baptism doesn't save you, and no doctrine or dogma of men about baptism is correct. Nor is it false. It's just giving you a false understanding of who Messiah is. He didn't give a command on how. 
there's denominations that say, well, you have to be baptized by leaning them forward. There's, there's denominations that says you get sprinkled on the head three times, sprinkled on the head two times. Um, there's denominations that say as soon as the baby's born, at a certain age of the baby, certain amount of days, eight days, nine days, take the baby to the priest, he dips them in the water or sprinkles them in the water. Um, and all these different ways. Why would you baptize a baby? That's a, that'd be the same thing as marrying a baby to another baby, getting them married. They're not going to know. They may grow up not even like each other. What difference does it make if you baptize a baby? It comes back to, if you're not baptized, you're going to hell. Where does it say that? Where in the Bible does it say that? Show it to me. I'll be glad to look at it. Do you feel me? All right, this is for one, one issue that creates different dogmas and doctrines of men that they follow and encourage and push. Why come out of her, my people, is so important. It's just, it, it, it's highly frustrating to me to hear people talk about Yeshua and the way they're talking about him. I'm like, you're talking about someone else because that's not my Jesus. That's not the Jesus that is portrayed and told about in the Bible. There's people who say, oh, the Old Testament's been done away with. You don't need it no more. Well, then throw it away. Throw it away and read John 3, 16 and, and uh, Philippians 4 and 12 that you can jump over big buildings in Christ. You know, throw it all away. Or read the damn thing and hear what it says and change your lifestyle to fit it. It doesn't change to fit you. That is called... <coughs> that is called... Um, uh, justifying your means. Don't justify your means. I think I missed my turn. Um, does that make sense? Um, does that help clarify a few things? Like I said, everything I say can be backed up in the scriptures of what I say. I don't have a private interpretation. Nothing new under the sun. So why do we have different doctrines if there's nothing new under the sun? Jesus established his people from the beginning. You know, when I read the Old Testament, I can see the proclamation of the coming Messiah all in there. I can also see the physical Messiah, Yeshua, interacting with physical people all through the Old Testament. So don't tell me the Old Testament's done away with, it's old and outdated and not needed anymore. The Old Testament is 4,000 years of Jewish history, or sorry, Israel's history, Hebrew history. <coughs> So you might want to know who the people are of God. If you are called his people. He did. And this replacement theology of today's church has replaced Israel is, is false too. Romans 11 clearly proclaims that. Paul, he, he, that's so clear. That you are grafted in to the house of Israel. Do not boast about it and make fun of those who were cut off because God can graft them right back in and cut you off. It's what it says. It's what Paul says. But no, we've replaced ourselves and we hate Israel and we don't even understand what Israel is. It's not a, a border state on the map. Israel is people. And we are either natural born Israel, Hebrew Israel, or we are sojourners and we are uh, grafted into the house. We are uh, adopted in to be his people. And that's a free gift. We have to receive it. So there is no difference in church. There's no difference in the church and God's people, Israel. We're all one. 
under Messiah. There's only one way, and that's trusting in what he said and done. Not what your pastor says, not even what I say. I'm just encouraging you and, and frustrating you to go either prove me wrong or look it up for yourself and understand it better. That's it. That's all I'm doing. So does that help? If, it, if it's still not clear, hit me up in the, in the comments. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. I am the Oilfield Disciple, a.k.a. Pastor Matt. I'll catch you on the next ride.